In the modern internet era, being successful is 99% just a battle within your own mind. What up everybody, Chris here, and today I wanna to talk to you about three of the biggest obstacles that keep people from being successful. In the modern era, in the age of the internet, you have access to just about everything, to everyone, and every bit of information. You can learn any skill that you want, right? If you wanna start a business from scratch, if you want to learn a high income skill, all of the tools to learn that are available for you and all the contacts that you need to make to do that are available to you. You have literally all of the tools at your disposal at any time. So why is it that so few people find success? The answer is that most of the obstacles that still exist, because the old obstacles are gone, right? You have access to the people, you have access to the knowledge, you have access to all the tools you need to be successful. In the modern internet era, being successful is 99% just a battle within your own mind. When I started doing digital marketing, and I didn't even really know what I wanted to do, I just knew that I wanted to do something that was, well, it was well paid and something that was different. I was working a normal nine to five corporate office job and I quit. I quit so I could do something different because I knew that the corporate life just was not fulfilling me. I wanted something bigger out of life. So I quit my job and I started researching like crazy all about digital marketing. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of digital marketing. I've talked about that before if you want to check that out. But I started with uh, social media marketing, decided that wasn't really for me and I tried all these different avenues. I kind of like was a kid in a candy store looking around at all these different things that were available. Shiny object syndrome we like to call it in digital marketing. And so. I, I had to learn that, well, all of these things are available. I could learn any one of these things, but I can't learn all of them because I just don't have enough time in the day. That was one inner struggle that I had to learn by jumping in and seeing what it was about. And then I had to deal with a ton of fear and uncertainty because all of a sudden my reliable income, which I had had for my entire adult life, was cut off. I was just, I kill what I eat. I, I have to make money or else I have no money to pay my bills. That was pretty scary for me because I was used to having a reliable income. And like I mentioned in this video all about if you want to do digital marketing, well there is a period at the beginning where you're learning, you're trying new things and you're just not going to make any money. And that period is really hard emotionally because there's so much fear, there's so much uncertainty. Anyway, I wanted to share this with you because what I've found is that being successful is much more an inner struggle than it is an outer struggle. You can learn to edit videos, you can learn to make websites, you can learn to do whatever skill it is. That's not a big deal. But getting over the fear, getting over the uncertainty, that is what is the big struggle. Now in previous videos I've talked about how fear and doubt will destroy your chances for success because those are huge. But in this video I'm going to give you three more inner obstacles that are, well they're related but they're a little more specific. The first major inner obstacle to success is selfishness. Not a lot of people think about this, especially when they're getting started. You get started doing digital marketing or starting a business or whatever it is. You get started because you want to make a lot of money. You have big dreams. You want to make an impact on the world. You want to feel important, right? You have all these motivations that are all about you. But quickly, you start to realize that the money that you want to get, the money that will help you achieve all your dreams, that'll help you get the penthouse that you want and help you get the fancy car and help you take the great vacations, etc. All these things that you've built up in your head that you want, well, the money to do that is all in somebody else's pocket. So in order to get that money, you have to be able to provide value for other people, which means that you have to shift your focus off of yourself and on to other people. You have to be able to solve other people's problems and help other people achieve their dreams and help other people achieve their desires and help other people avoid their fears, etc. You have to have your focus on other people. If you buy into this Hollywood narrative that most of us have been brainwashed to believe that rich people are evil and rich people are greedy and rich people only care about themselves, right? That's what you see all over the media constantly. That's what you read in the newspapers. That's what they teach you in school. Pretty much all of us are brainwashed to believe that. So it makes sense that if we can get over that guilt about wanting good things for ourselves, then all of a sudden we think we got it, right? We want these things for ourselves and the successful people are selfish so surely we can be successful being selfish. 
Well, the real world doesn't work that way at all. At all. I mean, unless you're gonna be a thief and steal things from people, the only way to get rich is by serving other people. So you have to get rid of the focus on yourself, at least momentarily, and shift the focus to other people and recognize how you can serve these people in a way that will make them want to pay you. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe icon, and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe icon, which will ensure that you get my new videos when they come out. I'm gonna go into this in a lot more depth in future videos, so make sure you don't miss out. And if you think this video would be helpful to someone you know, someone you care about, then share it. Share it on your Facebook and your Instagram, text it to somebody, email it to somebody, whatever it is. This is something a lot of people need to hear and you will be improving people's lives. Major obstacle number two is feeling like you aren't worthy. This is another thing that everything around us has brainwashed into believing. They beat into your head that success is reserved for a few special people and you're not one of them. You're not special, you're just an average Joe, you're not talented enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, whatever it is. You aren't worthy of any more than what the average person around you is settling for in their life. That's what we've been told. And then if you go looking for something more, they try to bring you down. They say, oh, who do you think you are? Why do you think you're better than me? Right? Nobody wants you to be successful because that would make them feel bad about themselves. They would compare unfavorably and that would hurt their ego. So they want to bring you down to make sure that you are not more successful than them and make them feel bad as a result. And most of us, have come to believe it. We believe that we're not worthy. And because we believe that we're not worthy, we don't go looking for anything more. Why? Because we don't believe we can. Because we don't want to feel like we're pretentious. We don't want to feel like we're grandiose. We don't want to be mocked and criticized by other people. We don't want other people to think that we're selfish and greedy and evil like the fake rich people in the movies and on TV. But look at the people who are successful. Why are those people successful? I'll tell you why. They're successful because they chose themselves. The people who are successful are the people who reached out and took it. You know, I was thinking about this and I thought of a, a particular talk show host. I won't say the name, but I, this is true of most talk show hosts, honestly. But, but look at these people. They're not particularly intelligent. They're not particularly talented. They're not particularly good looking most of the time. And all they really do is read off a teleprompter, something that somebody who's probably smarter than them wrote for them. So why are these people who are by all appearances completely average in every way, why are these people rich and famous? The answer is simple, because they reached out and took it. They felt that they were worthy and they reached out and took it. You could do the same thing. The third obstacle is fear of asking for things. And this is related, right? Because if you feel like you're not worthy of receiving good things, then you're probably going to be afraid of asking for them. And this takes a lot of different forms, right? You could be afraid of asking for a sale. You could be afraid of asking for business advice, afraid of asking for mentorship, for PR opportunities, you know, for partnership opportunities. There are all these things in life that if you were to ask and you were to receive, would make you far more successful than you are now, but you're afraid to ask because you feel like you're not worthy. Or maybe you're even afraid of meeting people because you're afraid you're going to be bothering them. Think about what underlies that fear. You're afraid that talking to somebody for a few minutes will be bothering that person. What does that say about the way that you feel about yourself? It means that you believe that you're boring or you're annoying or you're not worth their time. Because if you were worth their time, then it wouldn't be bothering them, right? It would be doing them a favor. I mean, if you had to call somebody up and be the one to say, hey, hey, you just won the lottery, you're now $20 million richer, would you be afraid of bothering that person? Of course not, because you have value to offer. If you're afraid that you're bothering someone, it's because you believe that whatever you have to say, that your presence, that your speech is worth less than the least valuable thing that they have to do with their time in the day. And probably society has brainwashed you into believing that if you talk to someone you are bothering that person, especially if that person is higher status than you, it's somebody who's already been successful. Society says, stay in your place, play in your own league, don't bother people that are special because you're not special. And if you believe this, if you believe that you're unworthy, then other people will believe it too. 
It's amazing how well other people pick up on our perceptions of ourself. If you believe that you are unworthy, if you believe that you're low status, if you believe that what you have to say is bothering someone, is not worth their time, it will show. If you do finally work up the courage to go actually talk to that person, the fact that you believe that you are low value will be broadcast in big letters across your forehead, metaphorically speaking. And it will make that person feel uncomfortable. It will convey to that person that you are low value, that you have nothing to offer them, and that person will not want to interact with you. And then you'll take that as proof, right? You'll say, I finally worked up the courage to talk to this person, but he didn't want to talk to me, so my teachers and my family and my friends and the TV and Hollywood, they were all right. I'm not special, I'm just a useless insect and I should never talk to anybody again. Right, so it's kind of a vicious cycle. You have to get over this idea that you're not worthy. You have to believe that you are worthy if you ever want people to treat you as though you are worthy. And again, the difference between being worthy and being unworthy is completely within your own mind. So the key to getting over this obstacle is that you have to re-brainwash yourself. You've been brainwashed to believe that you're not worthy. You've been brainwashed to believe that you're of low value. You've been brainwashed to believe that talking to you is wasting people's time. And most of the influences around you will reinforce that idea. So do you want to beat that? Do you want to stop believing that? Because if you believe it, it's true. But if you believe it's not true, then it's not true, right? Whatever you believe, either way, is true. If you believe that you're worthy, then you are worthy. If you believe that you are unworthy, then you are unworthy. It's completely within your own mind. So if you want to change that belief, you have got to re-brainwash yourself with the opposite belief, with the empowering belief rather than the disempowering belief. In order to do that, you've got to be very careful about the influences around you. Be careful about who you hang out with. Do you hang out with people who lift you up or people who beat you down? What kind of music do you listen to? Do you listen to music that lifts you up or beats you down? What kind of TV do you listen to? What kind of messages are you putting in your head on a daily basis? Are they lifting you up or are they bringing you down? Now I'm working on a more structured method for re-brainwashing yourself and I'll talk about that in future videos so make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of those. And as always I love to hear from you guys so tell me in the comments what is the biggest obstacle that's keeping you from success? Is it something external, something in your circumstances, something that you can't control? Or is it something within your own mind? And if you think that it's something external, ask yourself, be honest, is it really? Is the problem really something external to yourself? Or are you just making excuses because it's more convenient than addressing the difficult problems that exist within your own mind? So comment below, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Now, one of the biggest reasons for a lot of these obstacles is that people do not build their mindset on a solid foundation. They don't really know what they believe ultimately. They don't know what their purpose in life. They don't know what their goals are in life. And so, well, how can they feel good about themselves when they don't even know what path they're supposed to be on? I talk a lot more about that in this video, so I highly recommend it. If you're not quite sure what your purpose is in life, if you don't know without a doubt why you were created, why you were put on this earth, and the foundation for everything that you're doing in your life, check out that video now. I promise you will find it very helpful.